miles an hour. Well, we've got an update on the case of the two people accused of spying for Cuba at the U.S. State Department. According to Cuban television, Fidel Castro says the case is, quote, strange and reportedly claims he doesn't remember meeting the couple when he was president. And now, after almost 50 years, the Organization of American States says it's ready to welcome Cuba back into the fold. And that move has angered many U.S. lawmakers, some of them who say the U.S. should cut off funding to OAS. Congresswoman Eliana ross Leighton was born in Cuba and is the ranking Republican on the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Congresswoman, thank you for your time today. No, thank you so much. Well, let me ask you first of all about this report about these two alleged spies arrested here in Washington. Uh, did they sort of reawaken us to the fact that Cuba may still very much be a danger to, to the U.S.? Absolutely. It's incredible to me that at the same time the United States is making overtures to this communist dictatorship, they, uh, the Cuban government does everything to undermine our U.S. national security. Uh, this recent arrest is just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many uh, spies operating within the U.S. government, uh, through academia, uh, everywhere you look. And this is, uh, as we know from the experts, the rule rather than the exception. There's Ana Belen Montes, another high official who's serving 25 years in a federal penitentiary in Texas for spying on the United States. So here we are wheeling and dealing in uh, within the OAS to try to get Cuba back into the fold, uh, putting olive branches out to the Castro regime. And what do the Castro brothers do? Do everything within their power to infiltrate military institutions, the State Department, the U.S. Congress, everywhere you look. When are we going to wake up and, and, and get, the, get a reality dose of what these Castro brothers are all about? They're enemies of the United States. Well, let's talk about the Organization of American States. I mean, after 47 years lifting the suspension of Cuba being involved, I know the U.S. had said, you know, if you're going to bring them back, let's do so with conditions, which apparently the OAS said no conditions were welcoming them back. I mean, does that buy Cuba some credibility on some level at the international stage? Well, shame on us and, and shame on all of the uh, member nations of the uh, OAS because clearly in the charter of the OAS, it says that one has to be a democratic country. Uh, and in Cuba, there's no political divisions whatsoever because there's only one political party allowed to operate. That's the Communist Party. There are no real elections. There are no labor unions. Uh, there are no rights of any kind. There's no freedom of expression. If you have uh, the OAS charter itself, in Cuba, that's considered an illegal document. If you have the International Principles of Human Rights, that's an illegal document. If you have the U.S. Constitution, it's an illegal document. So here you have a communist dictatorship coming into the OAS, which violates the very charter of that organization. And where does the OAS get its money? Well, 60% of its funding comes from U.S. taxpayer dollars. And if we don't think that we're in an economic situation that's dire right now, how does every person who's listening to our show feel about their dollars going to this uh, inept uh, organization that does nothing but violates it, its own norms? Having Cuba in OES will not bring the Cuban people any further uh, toward a democracy and just legitimizes a communist dictatorship. All right, Congresswoman, very well said. We thank you for your time today, and uh, hello to all of the thank home you. state there in Florida. Yay, Sunshine State, today at least. Absolutely.